Look, all of Gorgoth's riffs are pure platinum, but the thing with these riff analysis videos is that I just talk about one riff, so here's one that's really good. I'm gonna talk about some thwarted symmetries in both form and harmony, which both sound very Gorguts and, I think, are characteristic of Luc LeMay thinking like a classical composer. This is something that he says he does a lot in interviews, and normally I think this interest in classical music shows up in his motivic thinking. He's always playing with and developing little ideas, for example with the way that the melody of this riff floats around at the end of Oceans of Wisdom, before becoming the full version at the start of Forgotten Arrows. <laughs> This type of stuff is straight up Beethoven in spirit, but the weird symmetries I'm going to talk about also share some ground with modernist music, I think. First, the riff is built roughly symmetrically around a midpoint low chug. Six eighth notes before and after this midpoint, we get a big low G. <laughs> There's also some gestural symmetry in that before this midpoint, stuff is generally descending, and after, it's climbing back up. It gives the riff this nice wave shape. But this riff is also slippery. The symmetry is warped. Other than the central cell around the midpoint, it's not symmetrical in time. The first descending portion is more than twice as long as the second ascending portion. Making it even more slippery is the fact that the repeats are a little wonky. We start with one iteration of those low chugs, but this isn't repeated with the rest of the riff. It's like a little introductory tag that throws off my sense of what the most basic version of the riff is, or even where it starts and ends. The fact that the last iteration of this riff is truncated has a similar disorienting effect, but it also means that this entire first riff section is bookended by these low chugs, which reclaims a bit of symmetry. It seems like the kernel idea for this riff is some rhythmic symmetry and some gestural symmetry, but the idea is elaborated in a slippery, asymmetric way. Very Gorguts. The harmony is also very Gorguts. I have another video on death metal harmony where I argue that often what matters is the sound of the open lowest string and in certain intervals, especially minor seconds and minor thirds. Everything I talk about there still applies for this riff, but I'm going to go into more depth in this video. Unsurprisingly, the subgenre of dissonant death metal is often pretty dissonant on a surface level, and often what that means is that you hear a lot of one specific type of chord. In set theory, we call this an 016 trichord. This means any collection of three notes that contains both a minor second and a tritone. I sometimes call it the math core chord because you hear it a lot there. <laughs> but it's also all over the place in dissonant death metal and Gorguts' music in particular. In this riff, it's the first sound that we hear. It also makes a more subtle appearance in the first ascending palm muted thing after the midpoint. But maybe at a deeper level, what's important here is the use of symmetrical pitch collections. Symmetrical pitch collections, such as the whole tone collection and the octatonic collection, can sound disorienting because unlike the diatonic collection, which is the major scale, the minor scale, all the church modes, there are no structural clues about what role any note within a symmetrical pitch collection plays. This is because if you rotate it, it looks exactly the same at several points. In Forgotten Arrows, we get a lot of hexatonic fragments. This is the collection that evenly spaces six pitches among the 12 possible chromatic pitches by alternating minor thirds and minor seconds. Yeah. 
The sound of any portion of this collection is pretty distinctive and shows up in several places in this riff. What's interesting though is that instead of just sticking to one hexatonic scale, we get fragments from two different ones. When descending, they use the one that includes A sharp and B, and when ascending, they use the one that includes C and C sharp. This makes it feel like the sound of the collection is more important than sticking to any single scale. I'm also filing this difference in harmony between the ascending and descending parts under disrupted symmetry for the purpose of this analysis. <laughs> The other way that the symmetry of the harmony is warped has to do with the fact that despite all of the classical slash modernist art music influences, this is still guitar music. A lot of Gorguts' music makes use of open strings to thicken harmonies and make them more dissonant. In this riff, the open third string rings for a lot of the time, and this static pitch makes different harmonic colors when combined with the moving parts of the riff. In the first descending part, for example, it's a major third below the moving part, then a unison with it, then a minor second above it. I think of this as a dissonant middle voice pedal point or drone. Pedal points are used a lot in music, uh, but they're almost always below whatever else is happening in pitch. Like when the bass or the lowest part of the guitar just sits on the same note for a bit regardless of what's going on above it. Here we get a dissonant pedal thing in a middle voice instead of a lower voice. This is very idiomatic for guitar, which means that it makes sense to play it. It's, it's ergonomic on the fretboard, and it's much more specific to dissonant death metal. I find this type of thing has a cool kind of kaleidoscopic effect, with the drone thickening the harmony in different ways at different points in the riff. <laughs> So to recap, there's some unusual symmetry in both form and harmony, which itself would be pretty weird sounding because full-on symmetry in harmony, rhythm, or form rarely sounds natural. But both types of symmetry here are also thwarted or warped in a couple ways, giving this riff that undeniable Gorguts feel. I'm going to try to convey everything I've talked about in one analytical visualization. Wish me luck. <laughs> Such a good riff. Thank you for following me into the harmonic theory weeds. I hope nobody gets a rash from them. See ya.